What's up, Beardos? It is James, the Beer Boy here, back at you again with another beer review. And this week, we are going to be looking at three Brewdog beers. Now, one of them is quite special. Recently, it was International Women's Day, and to celebrate, Brewdog released what they have dubbed the Pink IPA, which is this bottle right here. I uh, don't know if you can see, but on the side there, it says Pink IPA. Beer for girls. Uh, so they brought this out um, as a sort of celebration um, for women everywhere. This was a beer that you could pick up at Brewdog stores for 20% less if you identified as a woman. And that was to sort of address the gender pay gap. Uh, on top of that, every um, one of these beers sold. Brewdog uh, donated 20% of the proceeds for the beer to uh, women's charities, which is admirable. I've been a big fan of Brewdog for a very long time. They're one of my favorite breweries. Um, I go to the Brewdog bar in Manchester quite a lot just because I really enjoy the vibe there. I like the beers. I like that they try something different. I like that they have their Equity for Punks campaign where you can own a share of Brewdog. I think everything they do is really clever. I know that there are some detractors for Brewdog, but I am definitely not one of them. I am a big Brewdog fan. So I think I'm going to try this pink IPA. So the, the other interesting thing about this is it is literally just the exact same as punk IPA. And I've got one of the punk IPAs as well. So we can do a bit of a test between the two of them, see if they really are the, uh, the exact same beer. And I can let you know. All right, so we're going to start with the uh, pink IPA here. Got to get my bottle opener out. <laughs> Uh, so, I am going to be drinking this beer from the bottle. Uh, with Brewdog beers, they are not bottle conditioned, as far as I am aware. Um, I'll let you see the sort of satisfying. There you go. Uh, they're not bottle conditioned, as far as I'm aware, so they're safe to drink from the bottle. And I kind of like drinking from the bottle. It's something that uh, me, my friends, my family call a cowboying a beer. As in, to drink a beer like a cowboy in a western film. So, right off the bat, it smells like a Punk IPA because it is a Punk IPA. I'm a big fan of Punk IPA if you haven't tried that beer before. It's kind of a staple for a lot of uh, beer lovers out there. Uh, most bars these days stock beer, uh, Punk IPA as their sort of craft beer. Um, it's a nice beer, I like it. I have to admit I am more of a fan of Dead Pony Club. I think that that beer is a lot nicer, it's a lot hoppier and lighter, but you can't go wrong with uh, Punk. So let's give it a taste. All right, yeah, right off the bat, you've got the the hoppiness, you've got the uh, the richness of the flavour. It's quite a complex beer, even though it's sort of their headline beer, the beer that everyone knows and loves. Um, but yeah, I, I really do, I really do like this beer. On the back it says, Pink IPA, not beer for girls. But on the front it does say beer for girls. <laughs> It's a good beer. There's not much more to say about it, really. It's a beer that I enjoy. It's a beer that I like drinking. It's quite an easy drinking beer. Good for parties and things like that. Mm. Yeah, I've got these nice and cold as well. Um, I actually picked this beer up from Tesco, uh, just around the corner from my house, which is unusual. Um, I didn't think they'd be stocking anything like this, but Brewdog must have sent them out to all of their sort of suppliers. That's a good beer. I cannot argue with it at all. If you've not tried Punk before, I will give go a bit more in-depth about what the beer tastes like. Like I said, it's very hoppy. Um, it's quite zesty and citrusy. Um, it's quite highly carbonated. There's a lot of uh, bubbles in there, which I don't think is a necessarily bad thing. It is quite light, even though the alcohol percentage is quite strong. This is a 5.6% beer, um, which is quite heavy for a sort of easy drinking IPA. Um, there's a little bit of sort of caramelly maltiness that comes through as well, which I don't complain about. Um, so yeah, great beer, great initiative. I've seen a few detractors of the initiative on uh, Twitter and Facebook and things like that. And I don't really agree with it. Like, so what, you get it 20% cheaper, you're just gonna pay, if you're a guy like me, the same price as you would normally pay for a Punk IPA. It's just that if you identify as a woman, you get it a cheeky bit cheaper and more power to them for for doing things like this. Brewdog don't shy away from doing interesting initiatives. Uh, so yeah, hopefully they'll do more things like this in the future and we can enjoy it. 
Okay, so that was the pink IPA. Next up, we are going to try the uh, punk IPA. Now, this is a little bit redundant, to be honest. Um, it's literally the exact same beer as pink IPA, but I thought... Oh, that was really bad. Uh, I thought I might as well give it a go, just to tell you if it does taste any different. I don't know why they'd lie to us, but who knows. Uh, yep, yeah, smells exactly the same. Mmm. Tastes exactly the same, yeah. Good beer. Uh, this one is celebrating the Equity for Punks campaign. Um, every year they sort of release shares that you can buy. Um, so yeah, if you do fancy getting involved with uh, the Brewdog brand, or if you like what they do, have a check out of the Equity for Punks package. I'll put a link in the description for that one. Um, and yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think about this initiative. Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? Is it going to lose them customers? Are you a fan of Brewdog and what they do and what they've brought to the craft beer marketplace? Um, yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts about all that kind of stuff. <sighs> good beer. So because that was sort of the same beer twice, I thought I would review another Brewdog beer as well. Just because, like I said, I'm a big fan of them uh, and, and it was three for five pound deal, so I thought I might as well get three beers. So the other Brewdog beer that I've got is the Kingpin beer. Now I've heard a lot of good things about this beer. This is their 21st century Pilsner. Um, I'm not usually a huge fan of Pilsners. They're probably one of my least favorite beer types. Um, but I'm willing to give this a go. because I've heard very good things about it. I've heard it's very light, uh, fragrant, hoppy. All the things that I love from beer, so let's give this one a go. There we go, first time. <laughs> uh, this smells nice. Right off the bat, it's got that Pilsner smell. I can never put my finger on what it smells like. There's always, a, hate to use a SpongeBob quote, but there's always a smelly smell with Pilsners that is just like unmistakable. It's not a bad smell. There's actually not all that much to it, but it's got a kind of, it's like Wheaty. What it smells like is if you've ever been to a brewery, um, sometimes they will pass around like hops and malts and all that kind of thing. Uh, and the, just the smell of the brewery in general with the water and the hops and the mash and the sour and all that kind of stuff. That's what this beer smells like. It smells like you're just inside of a brewery. Yeah, um, so let's give it a little taste. Again, we're going to cowboy this beer. Ah, that's a good pilsner. That doesn't have the sort of heaviness that I usually associate with Pilsners. This is a nice sort of light beer, it's 4.7%. Nothing too special about that. But it's not got that, um, I've mentioned it before, the funny aftertaste that you get with some beers where it's almost like coppery, metallic, uh, sticks to the back of your throat. This went down nice and easy. Now that might be because I've just had the couple of Punk IPAs there. Um, and the, the strongness of those beers sometimes overpowers other beers, if you try them later, I find if I have like an IPA or a strong beer and then go to a Foster's or a Budweiser or whatever, it's like I'm drinking water. And this has got a similar kind of thing. Yeah, it's but it's it's quite nice. It's quite light. Um, I'm not sure. It tastes a little bit like Star of Pramen. Um, now, Star of Pramen is a decent beer. It's a good beer if you can find it uh, on draft. And this has got a very similar taste to it. I'm pretty sure that Star Parman, Star o Parman is uh, a Pilsner as well. So that would make sense. Uh, yeah, there's nothing too special about this. I, I wouldn't rate it too highly, but I can see what people mean by the fact that it doesn't taste like... Well, I've just said it does taste like <laughs> every other Pilsner. Um, but it does have a bit of a lightness to it that you don't normally get with Pilsners, is what I'm trying to say, but not so eloquently. Yeah, that is a decent beer. Um, if you want me to read the bottle to you, it says, Kingpin is brewed with 100% malt and a juggernaut of hops. Now, I can't really get the hoppiness coming through all that much. There's a little bit of it. Uh, it says, expect the first wave of robust, full-bodied full malt character to hit. Then spicy citrus notes charge across the palate. I don't really, uh, I don't really get that. Uh, so when I taste it, I've got kind of not much smell in front, that kind of brewery smell. Right up front, you do get a bit of maltiness, and then it kind of dissolves into nothingness. It just goes into like water at the back of your throat. So yeah, if you if you fancy a change, or if you want to try a different kind of Pilsner, 
give that one a go. Um, if you do want to support uh, Pink IPA, if you see it near you, you might as well get it. It's just the exact same as Punk. It's the same price if you are a bloke. It is slightly cheaper if you are not or if you identify as being a woman. Give that a go. You might as well. It's for a good cause. And then Punk, tried and tested, decent, can't complain, good beer. And that's what we're all about here. If you have tried a good beer and you would like to tell me about it, please do so in the comments. I love to hear about beers um, from around the world. Even if I can't get hold of them, it is nice to know that they are out there. And enjoy beer. Just go out and have a drink. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. If you can like this video, share this video, all that nonsensey YouTube stuff, subscribe, you know, all that kind of boring stuff. And I will see you next time. Next time, we're going to have even more Brewdog, if you can believe it. <laughs> I have got my hands on a growler of Native Sun, which is their New World IPA, I believe it is. Um, so I'm going to be giving that a go. It's been sat in my drinks cupboard, taking up space. So I'm going to have to give it a go and refill my growler. It's quite a strong one. I think it's like 8 or 9%. So I'm going to put it in its whole other video so I can talk about how complex it is. Uh, and yeah, goodbye. Farewell. Enjoy beer. Have a good evening or day or whatever it is. This week we've got a special episode. We're going to be doing three punk... punk. <laughs> this week we are going to be doing three Brewdog beers. That is... Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I'm so gassy after those beers.